YouTube fan community, Diana Ross and the Supremes fan, Neil Diamond fans, random people on the internet. My name is Giggins, and we are here today to talk about a very unique piece of music history, for me anyway. It's happening. Diana Ross and the Supremes slash Neil Diamond. This was put out by MCA Special Markets around 1970. Um... There are only three different versions of this that I can find. This was a thing that MCA put together um, because around this time they had kind of sucked up a few labels. They saw, they they had taken up um, the the Uni label, the Decca label, the Cap label, and um, and uh, Coral, and they kind of combined into one. And so MCA was able to like put out music that they hadn't been putting out before. So they did they did a couple of these sets where. Side one was one group, side two was another. As far as I can tell, only three different ones existed. There was another one for Peggy Lee and Jack Jones, and there's another one for Roger Williams and Burt Camper. Um, this was the first in the series, and what I was able to find doing the uh, research here on some of the like the you know code numbers for these things, um, they all came out around 1970, and they looked like 1970, especially calling it "It's Happening." I did find a report somewhere that said this came out in 1972. That can't be right because Matrix number wise, this is the first one, and the other one was all the one, the third one I found was also from 1970. So that's impossible for this to have come out in 1972. It has to be 1970. Anyways, what they would do is combine labels. So Motown label for Diana Ross and the Supremes, Uni label at the time for early Neil Diamond. Um, all right, that's, no, he was on Uni at this time. He was on Bang before that. Um, this is a really cool release. I stumbled upon this for a dollar at a record store a couple months ago, and I had to pick it up because I'd never seen it before, and I loved the pairing of these two acts. I thought that was such a cool idea. Um, I really love Diana Ross and the Supremes, and I love Neil Diamond, so I was like, all right, let, let's see what this is all about. And the track listing on here is fantastic because I didn't know any of these Diana Ross and the Supremes songs because they're from their later albums in the late 60s, or at this point, it was basically Diana Ross on her own, and there was like a backing group doing the vocals. It wasn't Cindy and Mary anymore, it was whoever was around. Um, which is kind of sad, but I forget the name of the band. It was the Adantes? Or on Adantes or something? Was the backing group that did the vocals that wasn't Cindy and Mary? Um, so, kind of sad by that point, but the songs on here are really, really good. Um, so you open up with a track called The Composer. And I really enjoyed this song. It hit number 27. It was apparently a single from their album, Let the Sunshine In. Um, Smokey Robinson ended up re-recording the song himself. He did write it, um, but he ended up re-recording it himself with the Miracles in 1969. And I really love this song. It's got a really cool string section. It sounds like a classic Motown song. Um, the melody is really nice. I love the way they rhyme symphony with uh, Rhapsody, just like they did in the early 60s. Um, the breaks are really cool, and there's a humongous amount of happiness throughout this song that really, really feels, um, you know, it transcends time. You can hear it in their voices. And um, I like the changes. I think the changes themselves are pretty complicated, and the song as a whole is pretty complicated because there's a lot of changes throughout this thing. Um, easily one of my favorite Supreme songs. I never heard it before I had this album, so it was a cool introduction to that song. I love it. Uh, no Matter What Sign You Are is also from that same album, Let the Sunshine In. Um, which was also a single, hit number 31. Um, I like the, the cool, like, cat screams throughout this thing. Um, it sounds like a screaming cat. But they, they go through all the different signs, like, you know, Taurus, Aries, Capricorn, Leo, all that kind of stuff. Um, Libra and all that. So it's fun to hear them incorporate signs like that throughout a love song. It's pretty fun to hear. It's really dancey as well. Uh, some things you never get used to. This track is interesting. Uh, it came out in 1968. As a single, and at the time, it was their lowest charting single since the early 60s, since before they were popular. It hit number 30, um, which for the Supremes is pretty low. And because of that, um, you know, the, the people at Motown thought this album, this song was going to be a hit, and so they were building an album to go around that song. When the song failed to be a hit, they kind of scrapped that album and threw it on as a track on their Love Child album, which was released later that year in November. Um... It's got a real classic Motown sound, and I love the breaks throughout this thing. Um, I love the drama, the sweeping chorus feel. You know, it, it definitely has that, like, it's got elements to make it a pop hit, but maybe at this time, in 68, maybe that was a little worn out and, and didn't and been done before. And literally, because of that, the Love Child album was a complete departure. I mean, it was more of that, like, 
psychedelic kind of soul feel that they started doing, the Temptations started doing. Um, it just kind of took over. But really interesting song nonetheless. And then um, Does Your Mama Know About Me, track four on this thing, was also on the Love Child album and written by Tom, co-written by Tommy Chong. That guy. Um, really not a bad song though. And then Get Ready uh, and Side One here, which is a really faithful rendition. I think the only difference between this and the Temptations one is that the brass feels like super heavy and like really in your face. I love the guitar work. Um, and overall, it's a real faithful rendition. It just, it's the song Get Ready that the Temptations did, but Diana Ross and the Supremes are doing it. And this is the earliest song on here. It was on their Supremes and Go-Go album from 1966, um, which was the first all-female group album to hit number one on the Billboard 200. So very, very cool. So that ends side one with uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes. And then you get side two, which is a complete departure from like the Motown feel, that pop feel, that dance feel, because you get some real early, interesting Neil Diamond stuff here. Um, tracks like Brooklyn Roads opens this thing, which is easily one of my favorite Neil Diamond songs of all time. It's, it's one of the most amazing songs he's ever written, which was a single and went to number 58. Um, but it's a song about looking back, it's a song about changes, it's a song about places you used to know and, and, and yourself as a kid and, you know, growing up and all this stuff. It's, it's a really, really deep track. Um, I love the production on it, I love the feel of the acoustic guitars, I love the percussion. Um, just an amazing song. If you haven't heard it, check out Brooklyn Roads, Neil Diamond. Um, and then the rest of the tracks on here all come from the same album, um, Brother Loves Travel and Salvation Show, which was released in 1969. So you get tracks like Long Gone, Glory Road, And the Grass Won't Pay No Mind, and If I Never Knew Your Name. And all of these songs kind of blend together a little bit. They're all kind of, you know, really nice acoustic songs. Um, it's Neil figuring out how to write decent songs. And they are decent songs. I mean, he would, he, there's better songs for sure. But I mean, Long Gone's pretty cool. And The Grass Won't Pay No Mind definitely has that, like, singer-songwriter feel, you know, kind of trying to write a standard kind of song. It's not bad. Um, and um, overall, there's really not much else I can add about those songs. They all kind of have the same feel. Glory Road's okay. It's not one of my favorites. But, um, you know, it, I like hearing Neil at this time because he was still figuring out how to get there. You know, and that album had eventually was reissued with Sweet Caroline on it, which was a humongous song for him. And after that, he'd go on to write some of the best music of his career. But, um, you know, this era of him trying to grow as an artist is fascinating to listen to. So, really interesting set. Um, and one thing I do want to talk about with this thing, the actual, the MCA Special Markets idea didn't even last that long. It only lasted for maybe a year or two before it became MCA Special Products. And, um, you know, changed over again. But the label, well, I guess you can see it here too. The label kind of looks like the DECA label, and that's because they soaked up the DECA label. Um, but, let me show you the sleeve here. I really like the sleeve. Uh, it's got a really nice blue with that color band in the middle. And it's got the uni label for Neil Diamond there. And then you get the other side, Diana Ross and the Supremes with the Motown label. So, for me, this was kind of a cool surprise. I had never heard of anything like this from, from MCA at the time. Um, it was definitely, I'm sure it was some sort of budget thing that existed at, you know, cheapo bins throughout America at the time, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of a weird thing I wanted to talk about today. There's the back cover. So, it's kind of cool. It gives, like, a little story about um, Diana Ross and the Supremes and then Neil Diamond as well. Um... You know, this was released, I guess, right at the time when the Supremes kind of broke up, or around the time Diana Ross left the Supremes and started her own solo career. And Neil Diamond was definitely picking up steam at this time um, in his own right. After having written for the Monkees and a bunch of other people in the mid-60s, he was doing his own thing at this point. So, really interesting set. Not much else I can say about it beyond that it exists. Um, and there's only a couple other ones like that. And they actually show the, um, the different albums you could buy at the bottom there. But yeah, kind of a cool set. Definitely a fun listen, and definitely opened up to um, opened me up to a couple of Diana Ross songs I never heard before. Um, the composer now being one of my favorite Supreme songs ever. So, thanks, Dollar Bin. Um, that's it. My name is Giggins. This has been It's Happening with Diana Ross and the Supremes and Neil Diamond. Um, as a rating, I'd probably give this thing like maybe a seven, maybe a six or a seven. Um, 
as far as Neil Diamond songs go, they aren't my favorite songs. He's got much better. And um, it's interesting because a lot of his songs are just album cuts with one single. The Supreme side is all singles that were like kind of bubbling somewhere in the lower reaches of the charts at the late 60s. Um, so it's an interesting compilation for sure. If you like Neil Diamond, if you like Diana Ross and the Supremes, check it out if you can find it. Um, my name is Giggins, this is Bed Album Reviews, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and that's it. Bye-bye.